It's Roger Mudfossil University with a request from people that can create protonic gases, deuterium and tritium ionized gases, and then accelerate them, not extreme like they do at CERN or anything, but just accelerate them up and put them through a venturi. We've done it with light, and light turns into a plasma. If we can turn these protonic gases into a plasma using a venturi, we can possibly solve the energy crisis. This is fusion. These gases, when they are accelerated through one of these venturis, I believe that they will turn into a plasma because all of the particular components of these protonic nuclei will become crushed into each, other, each other's regions and they'll be ripped apart and then they will be able to recombine into helium from the two gases, tritium and deuterium, which is two and three. Helium is four. That leaves one left over. That's what you get out of it. You get 20% return. Now, let's look at what my claims are. I'm claiming that we've created electronic plasma. And I'm also creating this is the right hand rule. And that spins to the right, the particle, as it leaves the accelerator. It begins to get crushed up here. You can see it's getting closer and closer. And it's spinning to the right, drifting to the left. Now, when they are sent through the accelerator, this acceleration seen at, at the right here is creating Cherenkov glowy white radiation plasma. That's plasma. All the particles are together. Exactly as we would expect from acceleration. Now, and, and I've talked to people at, uh, in Geneva, Switzerland, and they claim that this is all fully understood up to a certain point, except the Venturi they did not understand. And that is something new to them. And it's something new to the world. And it's something new, possibly, to fusion. Now, this is the output of the Venturi accelerator. The white cherry Cherenkov creates boson particles that carry the charge. And they're seen as white filaments, these little tiny white filaments. As the charged particle slams into unrestricted space after being restricted in the accelerator Venturi, it fluffs up. A magnetic field surrounding the charged particle which is in the center you don't see that it only does that for a very short time because it's initially going to pop and then slow down and as it slows down it'll go away but initially just after the accelerator and the bosons you find the Higgs fields and they pop like that go away but when you see them you see these round discs with these dotted particles those are the dots are the ether particles, which are ubiquitous. They are everywhere. They're in space, too. Space is not empty. These are the negative particles coming from light, because this is light. And it's coming from the sun, because it's excited electrons in their orbitals thrown from these molecules and atoms into the space, spinning towards Earth. And they have a mass, and they are particles, and they are dark matter and dark energy in space. Now, as they flow through here, this is exactly like a magnetic field surrounding a wire because it's a particle slamming through space exactly like happens in, in a wire. Now, this phenomena we see quite often now. Originally, it was only seen once or twice, but now we're getting a lot of reports about it. This is where the accelerator comes out, highly accelerated plasma. It starts to step down, and we see these two particles. Only, like I said, the fields only present for a short time. And then it drifts off into this, which is not particleized. Well, I don't know if it's particleized or not, but you don't see them in this form, which is obvious. There's obviously two potentials here. The, the, the light and the dark obviously mean that there's an a, a, a energy and not energy in that same little box which looks like a torus to me and has spikes coming up top and bottom. Now, it appears to be the actual particle, particle as it's slowing down. The accelerator is at the left. We have many of these shots showing this in recent experience, many now. Uh, more pics of these seem to be coming in every day, and there's uh, two cycles, red and green, that look the same. And you can see this one here done by uh, another fellow. Most of it was done by Rodney Warren, but this was done by Fabian uh, Bouvier 
and um, he's picking up these particles as well. Um, and I, I go on to say what you have seen is light particles. So there's and, and there's no pun in that. They're not heavy enough to do the things that we want to do. We need heavy protons. Okay, so what is electronic plasma compared to protonic plasma? And they, don't give me all this re standard model stuff because uh, this is not standard model. Standard model doesn't work. This it does. All right. It's it's it's. This, it's not the standard model of physics, but it's quite obvious what you see. The laser light can easily be excited into plasma, as shown in all my pictures and the video that's attached. Now, what does that mean? It means plasma is the key to fusion. We know plasma. We have to shake these molecules into, into their little bits and let them go back together by themselves. When they do, these two different types of, of hydrogen will recombine and give off a hell of a lot of power. 20%. All right, because it's, it's five atomic mass units recombining down to four atomic mass units. It's two types of hydrogens combining to create helium which is drops off one atomic mass unit and for and what i'm saying is electron flood theory predicts for every helium formed every single helium molecule for, or, or, or atom formed there will be a release of approximately 1900 electrons and i show all the background on this and it's it's very simple to, to understand which is the amount of the neutron mass in an electron equivalent. So the electrons can be harvested in a simple vacuum chamber where the venturi would be located inside that vacuum chamber and a basic positive negative electrode. When these negative particles become available they can just be sucked up into the positive electrode and drawn off to do the work that they need to be done. If this acceleration technique could be used, these particles, and I think it can, it could possibly solve our energy issues. All right, Mud Fossil University on YouTube, many videos explaining the acceleration of plasma. Go up there, Mud Fossil University, I mean, you're probably here now, but if you're not, go up there, subscribe. I mean subscribe, because they're putting stuff up every day, and we're getting into classes, regular structured classes, all that. And it's all free. So The hope is to use accelerated, ionized hydrogen protons, the deuterium and tritium, in a gaseous form, through a venturi, of course, you have to excite them a little bit to force them through that venturi. I don't think it's going to take all that much. I don't, it's not going to be up to speed of light. I don't think so. Now, you possibly could put two opposing venturis, one slamming from each side, and create a plasma in between the two of them. I don't know. You know, this is something we have to play around with and look. But this is what we need to do using these two gases. Now, the venturi was designed and... and, and um, by Rod Warren, and uh, most of the pictures were by him, and Fabian did some, and, um, and I did the research on it. So that's what we're showing you. Now, what you should do is go up here and look at arterial, arterial earth in peril, because the earth is in peril. And I'm going to have them uh, put this together and post this up very soon. But the Earth is in peril. Okay, my friends, we and all know this is about what we're the, seeing, uh, and we need to get away from doing what we're doing to the Earth and get into fusion or some other form of energy. There is a lot of people working on things that is and not being taken seriously, that are being ignored for for destruction to the Earth. It's not right. It's just not right. And I can't do this. I can't. I have no power whatsoever. Somebody's going to have to stand together. Somebody's going to have to unite. Somebody's going to have to come and step forward. Somebody with power. I mentioned Warren Buffett. I don't mean to put anybody on a spot like that. All I mean was he's, he's one of the few, like Bill Gates, that have come forward and done something to try to make things better. And, and I deeply appreciate that. And so, but people can only do so much. But, you know, people have so much, some, that they can do much. That's what all I'm asking for. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to, trying to help where we can help, and I think everybody's going to have to put come together on this because we're all living in one place, and there is no real quick place to move over to. And it's not going to get better until it gets better, and it's not going to get better by itself.